away from the start, I can feel it in my heart, like All the way from the start Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine and today I'm back with a new tutorial for you all. And this one is covering some tips and tricks on how to make your uh, computer and your DAW more resourceful. How can you maximize the performance no matter what computer you're using? Um, I get a lot of questions about, you know, which Mac am I using? What setup am I using? And uh, I actually have a 2010 or 2011 iMac so it's really pretty old at this point um, when I bought it it was you know pretty good uh, stats in terms of uh, processing and all that but um, it's nothing crazy so a lot of people are like well how are you able to you know manage the larger sessions uh, with a lot of tracks a lot of processing going on <clears throat> excuse me and a lot of it just has to do with uh, these processes I'm going to talk about, these are things that I utilize all the time and it will allow you to really, you know, not be limited um, in terms of CPU processing and all that. So let's jump right in. So number one on my list of things to do to maximize or optimize your DAW is to turn off Wi-Fi while you're recording or mixing or producing. Um, I've noticed over the years that uh, when I turn Wi-Fi off, I get better performance out of logic and uh, that goes for cubase and some of the others i don't know if it's uh just based off of wi-fi being a, a cpu intensive process but for whatever reason it definitely helps and specifically with logic i was having some issues um more you know this was a little little longer ago they may have fixed it but um the cpu was spiking very very easily until i turned my wi-fi off so just something that you're going to want to uh, do and it also just accomplishes the uh, fact that you're not going to be so distracted to go you know get on the internet while you're trying to do whatever it is you're you're focused on the DAW so that's an important one all right so next up on the list is adjusting the buffer size now you're going to uh, see this in any DAW but in logic specifically you want to go to the preferences and the audio menu and we're going to adjust this uh, buffer size number which is represented in samples now just some guidelines here the lower the number the more cpu processing power it's going to require however it'll be more responsive so if you're doing something that is very uh, reliant on good timing like tracking drums or recording vocals you want to keep this number as low as possible so that what you're hearing isn't delayed and it won't mess up your timing as a performer or as a musician uh, so you can uh, set that lower to make that easier now if you're doing something like mixing where the timing aspect and the tracking aspect is less important in terms of the delay then we can raise that number to something like 512 or 1024 and what you'll notice is that you're going to be able to use more plugins uh, you're going to be able to uh, put in a lot more uh, cpu intensive plugins on your channels and it won't hiccup as much or as easily so it'll just be a lot more responsive uh, so just keep that in mind the third way to make your DAW more responsive is to use bounce in place or bounce to audio and uh, I've talked about this a lot in my videos but uh, it's really just about committing to a sound that you may get or um, even in certain uh, cases like with vocals if you have let's say I had um, auto-tune on one of these channels here and let's just load up auto-tune real quick and let's just say that uh, you know I mess with it I get my setting that I want now obviously I'm probably gonna be copying that auto-tune to a couple of channels and it's just gonna be sitting there you know tuning in real time as I'm playing back the session but if I've already got the tuning where I want it to be and I'm ready to commit to it and this goes for any effect for that matter. Um, I can use bounce in place to free up this channel. So I'll still have the tuned vocal, but uh, we're not going to have it running on our channel strip. So to do that, you want to look and see what your uh, shortcuts are. But mine is just control B. And if I click that, it's going to pull up the bounce region in place. Now we got a couple of different choices here. We got new track. That's fine. Now on the source, I'm going to mute it because I, I just want the new one, the tuned one. That's the one I want to hear. 
Um, I don't want to bypass the effect because I do want the auto tune applied. And we're going to leave the tail and we'll include any uh, volume automation, no normalize, and we'll hit OK. So it's going to go through and it's going to bounce that entire region with the auto tune. Um, and then it's going to mute this channel so that it's not eating up CPU in our uh, session as we're going through. So I have a tuned vocal here. This is the, the tuned of, of this one and it's just muted that. And if I want to just hide that track, I can hide it. So now I've got the tune one and I'm not utilizing anything on the insert chain. And let's say I needed to go back and change something. I could just click the hidden and go back and make some changes to my auto tune and then I could you know rebalance in place if I wanted to so that goes again for a lot of different plugins not just auto tune but um, anything you feel like you're comfortable committing to and you don't absolutely need it processing you know throughout the session every time you're playing it then this is a really really useful way to free up a lot of CPU and get a lot out of your DAW all right, so the next way to optimize your DAW and your sessions is to save the session to an external hard drive. And that also goes for uh, instrument libraries, samples, anything like that. If you're a producer, you just want all of that to be streaming from an external disk so that your internal hard drive is focused on running the DAW and doing your system tasks. So if we go to a save as, or you could even do a save copy as, um, we're going to just make sure that we're putting that on our external hard drive. So all of those files are being stored externally. You're going to notice that uh, your audio uh, streaming from hard drive, your disk IO is going to perform a lot better when you uh, do it this way. The last tip I have for optimizing your DAW in your sessions is to utilize delay compensation or a low latency mode, which is what it's called in Logic. Um, I believe it's it's called different things in different DAWs, but uh, you will find this setting in most of them. So in Logic, if we look up here at this control right here, this is low latency mode. And if I turn that on, it's going to automatically adjust our latency uh, for certain CPU intensive plugins. Now, one thing you need to notice about this is that it will actually disable certain plugins that are just way too uh, resource intensive. Um, it's not in this session right now, but certain plugins it will um, just disable because it can't compensate uh, for it accordingly. But uh, when you have this set up, you're going to notice that uh, your recording, your uh, MIDI instruments specifically are going to respond a lot more uh, quickly and snappy when you have low latency mode on. So again, in whatever DAW you're in, uh, make sure and try this out because it's a very handy way to quickly um, turn off that delay or get rid of a lot of the latency that's going to affect the way that you're tracking. I hope these uh, tips help you out. I know they've helped me out. Again, I'm using a uh, pretty old computer and have been able to get around just fine, at least for the time being, even in larger sessions like this one where I have a lot of plugins going on. Um, it's just all about utilizing your resources as best as you possibly can. And by using these tips, uh, I hope that you'll be able to do so. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you learn anything, like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.